everybody, Nate here from Octave Studios, and I got another tips and tricks video for you. I got this idea from my buddy Devin, who runs local band Smokeout Canada, and he asked me two things. The first was, what can bands do that are on a budget, or maybe have no budget, to help themselves uh, get tracks ready or get tracks out there? And the second was, what can bands do in a songwriting process to help work on songs? And I got three tips to help you out when it comes to working on building your songs and then one after all of that that can be towards helping you get some stuff out there. The first tip I had was to get RecForge Lite on your phone. It is a free app if you're on Android and if you're on Apple there's more than one microphone app I, that you can get. I'm more than sure on that. But all you do, get that on your phone and hit record. You're gonna have to find somewhere in your jam room that'll work Hell, you might have to put it upstairs if you jam in your basement and there's just nowhere to put a phone that's just um, too loud. But even if you say, put it in the back of a room where all the amps are, just listen around, try a few spots and use that. Send that to everyone in your band so you can all listen back. At least then you can hear back what you did. Number two, if you have a laptop, even a cheap one that you got for college or just something that's a few years old, download Audacity or any other free DAW, you can get Reaper for free uh, with a 60 day trial, and then get a cheap USB microphone. And then same thing, set that up somewhere in your jam space and record. But just hit record when you go to jam. But work on sections. Back in the day, individuals used to use cassette players and eight tracks and um, a bunch of different ways to try and record sounds just so they could hear them. Today is no different, we just have different technology and you can get yourself a cheap USB microphone for under $100. And if you already have a laptop, all you need to do is hook that up, set it up somewhere in your room, hit record, and then again, send it to everyone in your band so that you can all listen back to it and maybe hear some ideas that you jammed out that could possibly lead to new songs. Or hear how well you did on your other songs that you've already written when you practice them. How tight were they? Are there any changes you need to make? And anything like that. The final one when it comes to writing is Guitar Pro or Tux Guitar. Tux Guitar is a free guitar writing software that you can get, and Guitar Pro is, I, I'm not sure, I'll put the price up here so that you can check it out, but I do believe it is relatively inexpensive. I've been using Guitar Pro 6 since about 2012, if not longer than that, and it's a really good learning tool for one. If you are, say, not so great at learning by ear, and you still need to like teach yourself, the way Guitar Pro is set up is you can not only have the tablature set up, but you can also have the scaling note set up, and you can also have an instrument link or a box above you that actually shows where all the notes are on the fretboard. So as you are learning visually, you can also mentally tell yourself what these notes are and then get rid of it altogether and then go back to learning by ear. But with Guitar Pro, when it comes to songwriting, same thing, you can have your guitar on you, know what tuning you're in, and then you can fiddle around. Uh, try to program what you have via tabs into Guitar Pro. Um, programming drums is really easy in Guitar Pro as well. It's a uh, simple staff, it's really easy to figure out. Just think low notes at the bottom, cymbals up top, snare right in the middle, and you can easily learn how to write parts together. So if you are, say, in a band and you have a computer or a laptop, or even your phone, you can get Guitar Pro on your phone, although I'm not sure if you can write on it. I will have to check on that. If you can't, I do apologize. You were able to back when the app first released back in 2010, 2011. Without further ado, like I said, you can use that to write, make ideas, and send them off. And the bonus with this is, it's a good, really rough way to create tempo mats and demo tracks to send out to engineers so they can hear what you have or get projects set up. If you're about to go into the studio and you need to figure out tempos, if you already have it on Guitar Pro, that's one step ahead of the game than any other band because that's one less thing you'll need to do. And MIDI scratch tracks are another thing. It might not sound like the real deal, but if your drummer is comfortable tracking to a MIDI guitar for his end and then you going in and replacing it after, well, that's, that's another easy way to bypass some difficulties when you get to the recording stage. Now my bonus one for bands that actually want to try to release music on their own I will first say this, I do not advise this unless you have someone in your band who is experienced. If you have someone who's just trying to learn audio, I would advise taking this advice and learning how to mix and how to record 
and then going from there and either sending it off to other people if you get good recordings, if you're just not good enough at mixing, or just using it as a demo sort of thing. I made mistakes in my career early off when I was just recording my band and trying to figure this all out and releasing really subpar quality and it really didn't help the band I was in at those points in time. It would have been a lot wiser for me to do all this that I'm about to tell you and then get someone else to help out. But if you happen to have the ear, you happen to pick up on it, or if your band has the confidence in you, I would advise if you're trying to like just record your live stuff and see how good you are off the floor and you're still figuring stuff out, get a mixer. If you don't have anyone who has supreme mixing knowledge, like a simple 10 track Behringer live PA mixer, those are rather inexpensive. You can probably find them on eBay or Amazon for a decent price and then just plug your guitars in, like mic your, if you have the mics, this is again, this is a more expensive route. Um, but the more mics you have, the more things you can sync up together, throw them into there and you can just do everything live off the cuff that way. Another option is if you have a larger interface that and a bunch of mics, then you can also say, actually record yourself. Uh, use, uh, again, you can try Audacity. I would advise not using Audacity if you're going this route though. Get a better DAW. There are cheap ones out there that'll do just what you need with what we're talking about. And just record yourself. Get some practice mixing your band. Get some practice working on your stuff. I wouldn't release anything that you feel doesn't sound that great, but I would use it as ways to work on your material, send it amongst yourselves to work on songs, work on song ideas. It's a great pre-production idea for sending to other engineers down the line if you find that one song that we talked about in the previous video that you want to send out as a single. Last but not least, the other thing you can do, again, for demoing yourself, is get a small little two-channel interface and a decent DAW, get a bunch of free amp plugins, and do some rough demoing. You can get some free drum software like Contact, I believe, has a a light version and you can get like Matt Halper and drum samples if you want to go with Get Good Drums or there's a bunch of other free samples out there. And then on top of that, you can also get your free amp sims and just record yourself, write your songs, send them to each other. Uh, this will probably be the best route if you want to try to release stuff that's your own. But again, if you don't have a lot of experience mixing, I would advise just sending this amongst yourselves and learning from it. and trying to build yourself up and using it as a good pre-production method for sending to other engineers that want to work with you. And if you're a newer band and you're going down this route, remember your goal needs to be singles. You need to be working to that one song and this is a good way to figure out which song is that one song. The more in depth you want to get with this, the more money you actually spend on equipment and the more time you invest learning a completely different trade. And if it's something that interests you, go for it. I will not discourage anyone from wanting to get into audio that way. But if it's something you're trying to do for the benefit of your band, the best bet is to do it the easiest and most productive way for you. Whether that is your phone, whether that is a USB microphone, whether that is Guitar Pro, whether that is actually recording. Just do what works best for you in the songwriting process and then again, save up and actually hire someone to do it for you. Because unless you think that you are, or not think, unless you know you are your best option, then you got to think, what is our band worth? The bands that release high quality stuff do better than those that release a bunch of low quality stuff. With that, I hope all of you have a great week. Best of luck with everything you are doing. And if you haven't yet, check out the live videos that I released of Balragoth. I'm contemplating now going back and taking down the older live videos I've done for a few other bands and maybe re-releasing them and remixing them because again going into an earlier conversation low quality content doesn't really help anyone and I need to at least up the audio quality in some of those mixes to make them at least worthwhile to the bands that I'm trying to help out with that so remember you want to bring quality to your band. Quantity isn't always the best thing. And as a band, when you're songwriting, making sure that you can at least reference your work is more important than being able to mix yourself. Have yourself a great day.